I didn't jingle because I like the way I move, I like the way it sounds. It makes me feel good and empowers me. You want to learn how to dance jingle in the correct way from where it originated. It's supposed to make the sound of rain when you dance. It's also a healing dress. One thing I've always done was dance for the ones that can't, dance for the elders that can't. The Jingle Dress Tradition is a co-production of the Mille Lacs Band of Ojibwe and Twin Cities PBS. This program was made possible by the voters of Minnesota through a grant from the Minnesota State Arts Board, thanks to a legislative appropriation from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Uzu, kwe ma go in the moon. Mangi gai shivan go chai ag. Kita shantamuad o si baskai gan ga pionja ba magak. Kwan go nin kenege go in the kenda zin. Ka pio ang in the muad da si tago nga the baj and don. There was a man and a woman living down there and. The man finally told his wife, he said, you know, I've been having these dreams about these ladies dancing. Their dresses are different. They make a noise. He said, little metal things look like was sewn on their outfits, on their dresses. Me wanna min we weni. Me me gwa and goji. Ni wing ba wanna gwa. Oh. Ani ke ga pagiso wat. Me eta eji gwa yak. Gawin gi ajeshim o siwag. Gawin gaye gi kijabashim o siwag. Gi wad jepe bagiso wag. Oh. Kita wabin da na. Baker. Nana named them. Gay is he? Nana can make me on. Then what Jeeper book is? Oh, me no okay? Me no okay, gay is you in the Kenya? Come on. Uh-huh. So I should check out day one in the name them. Gonna put dog a wage mark on in the Kwewa gay we do Kawiwat. Yeah. She got together with some ladies in the community and they made those dresses how he described them and showed them how to dance. When they were finished with those, sometime later on they were having a drum ceremony. During the break in the afternoon, he got up and he spoke of his dream about these ladies.
We went to Gae, Ningi, Pinda Kunja Gaiman, Aho, Minik. During that ceremony, he had a little girl, it was his daughter. She was laying there, she was so sick, she couldn't move, couldn't get up. But when those ladies started dancing, she heard that sound that the dresses were making. <laughs> kind of sat up, perked up a little bit. As the afternoon and evening went on, she was eventually sitting up. She was actually out there dancing with those with those ladies in those dresses. And that's why people say that's a healing dress. Other tribes may have their own version of how the jingle dress started, but this is our version here in Mille Lacs. My grandma, the late Lucy Clark from Wedway, she said those ladies always behave themselves in a really, a really proper manner. She said, and they danced. They danced, they had pride. She said they were never dancing backwards or spinning around. It was just straight. So that was the beginning of the jingle dress, according to my elders. Now they said they sent one dress up to Canada, somewhere around the Fort Francis area. And another one went to our relatives up in White Earth. And our White Earth relatives gave our Lakota people the dress, shared it with them because they were close by. My understanding of the stories associated with the jingle dress is that this tradition appears soon after we can see in the photographic record around the Mille Lacs region in central Minnesota around circa 1920, which tells me it's the time of the World War I era, the conclusion of the war, as well as this global epidemic of influenza. Other Ojibwe people have similar stories, including the Whitefish Bay, Ontario community, who, from what I have heard, the story is nearly identical to the one at Mille Lacs. And then there are also some communities around the Rainy River area of the border of the United States and Canada that also seem to have new women's traditions of dance at this same time. So I myself can't pinpoint 
Did it arise in Canada? Did it arise in central Minnesota? Did it rise along the border of the United States and Canada? But what that tells me as a historian is that something very big has happened in Ojibwe communities for this really important and long-lasting tradition to emerge at that particular time. What's interesting to me that the very moment when the federal government is trying to suppress Indian dance and religion across the United States, there was in fact a very famous circular that came out of the Indian office at the time that was called the Dance Order that expressly forbid these traditions of, of music and dance. That at this very moment, this new tradition emerges among the Ojibwe women of the Great Lakes. So something happened in the 80s and the 90s so that this tradition, which had been confined primarily to the Great Lakes, it became a very widespread pan-Indian phenomena, perhaps with the rise of the northern and southern powwow circuits. The music for jiggle drift dancing most common is a, is a straight song. The straight dance, we just dance with the beat of the drum. We go forward and we go clockwise around the drummers. I go something like this. It took a long time for, for me to get it just right, from the feel of the drum uh, to, to, watching, to watching them, how they dance. To, to keep time with them. Second to that is what they call a sidestep. The sidestep is kind of going from side to side and you're going with the beat. You're not dancing like a straight song. You're actually going sideways and it's, it's more of a woman thing to do. taught a long time ago about the sidestep dancing. We were taught to only sing them only at night. Nowadays you see a lot of them being sung during the contemporary powers during the day, but those, are, those weren't our teachings. So jingle dress can be from 1900 all the way to 1950 and you're going to look at a completely different kind of dress. Historically the jingle dress cones were made from chewing tobacco lids. And sometimes, um, depending the area where the people were making them, sometimes they did use copper. And from what I was told that some people used lids from other things or they cut them out and then rolled them so that it would make a, like a clanking sound. Depending what they used, each dress sounded different. I was taught that the cones were used to send the spirits to help peel. They used to use tin cans, beer cans even, or any kind of cans I've seen on really old dresses, and they used to make them a little more special by turning the outside of the can outward so that the um, cones were then like kind of decorated and colored. Otherwise, they'd turn them inward and just keep them silver, but I've seen it both ways, and those were really old ones that they used to do that with. I made my first dress when I was about 14 off of a pattern that someone had given me, and it was a rough road of learning until I actually met someone who makes them for a living and she was nice enough to really like hone in my skills and teach me like almost like a boot camp and since then it's been it's, I've been making pretty good ones I think. The jingles I roll my own and it usually takes me about a day just to cut and roll them and then sewing the bias tape to string the jingles, probably about a couple hours. But then you have to measure, cut, crimp each jingle. So it might take you a day or two, depending how many jingles you're doing and how many dresses. 
to make the sound different on the dresses, uh, there's different brands of cones that you can buy that all make a difference in what the dress sounds like. It makes a difference how closely apart, uh, spaced apart the cones are on the dress. I actually have one dress that I made where I put my cones really close together because it looks awesome and it sounds awesome, but it's so heavy to dance in. And then, you know, you space them out further, you're gonna get less, like, full sound. I was always told, you know, to, when I'm sewing anything for anybody, whether even if it's beadwork, that you always should keep uh, positive thoughts in your head or you should be in a good place, you know, or never have negative thoughts. And if you get start getting frustrated or if you start to feel anything, you know, anger, frustration, that you should stop doing it, take a break and come back when you're in a better mindset because what you do goes into that work. You don't want that negativity to go into their outfit. Just like that. Oh, you're wearing contemporary yeah. dress too? Or? Getting ready for the powwow is pretty intense. Uh, there's lots to do. I, I braid hair a lot. Um, get our hair braided, get our, our hair ties on, make sure everything's set. Can't forget the makeup. The first day when we were getting ready at a mix house, it was definitely a good feeling, you know, laughing with the girls and getting ready, braiding our hair, putting our makeup on, you know, it, it's always, you know, a good feeling, especially representing the four colors. I had a dream a long time ago, and I was dancing, and in my dream, I was in the lax, and I was the only one in the arena, and I was wearing a black dress, like a black velvet dress, and then it had like rainbow colors, you know what I mean, for the seams and stuff. And then, like, I looked up in the sky, and there was a thunderbird in the sky, and that's my um, Ojibwe name, Money Dubane Shikwe. So it was a cool dream. So I'm thinking that's the kind of dream or dress I have to make. Right, I'd make it. Yeah, because like it was in my dream. That's what they say. Like, if you dream, you gotta remember the colors and make mm -hmm. that dress. <laughs> <laughs> When we were getting ready, like we did the, we kind of made sure, kind of like a warm up, make sure we're all intact, uh, in sync pretty much with, t with each other. Like I like to go out, I mean, just go out and see what each other has and uh, maybe run things through everybody, like run the teachings through the steps, the gracefulness. If they're not doing it the way we were taught, I mean, if you're dancing old style, we'd like to keep it old style. If you're dancing contemporary, we'd like to keep it contemporary. So just dancing with everybody else kind of shows each other what we got and what we want to do. We leave for the powwow, and we don't put our dresses on until we get to the powwow, just because they're hot. We want to keep them nice. Is there AC in here? <laughs> oh, good, you grabbed that. Yeah. And also, when you're dancing with jingle dresses, always be respectful when you're wearing those things. We don't dance fancy, we don't back up. You're representing these, they're sacred dresses. No booty dancing. <laughs> no, no booty dancing. Hey, who's behind us? Anybody behind us that you guys know? And ladies, make sure your ankles are clean. Oh. <laughs> check the ankles. Everyone do ankle, ankle check. check. <laughs> ankle well, check. They're not clean yet. Just a little bit silver. They will be after my makeup's finished. Just kidding. <laughs> and if they're chapped, just put Ain't spit on them and rub it in there. <laughs> just spit on them. Oh. She's the parking We're place. here! Woohoo! Ladies and gentlemen, we're always led in by the beautiful colors 
the staff, the Eagle staff. When I'm leading out, I get really excited. My heart starts beating, and it almost feels like it's beating with a drum. And then my, my feet start moving, and I start getting this rhythm with the drum. And it just feels powerful, like I'm supposed to be there. Um, I'm very spiritual, and I can feel it when I'm in the arena. Men, and wait to join the armed forces. Once we get in that arena, when we brought in the four dresses, you can't describe that feeling that we get. It's almost like you're on top of the world when you come out there and you get the dresses going and then you hear everybody else. As you well know that the beautiful dance that was gifted to the people of the Ojibwe people, this beautiful jingle dress dance that you see coming behind the veterans that is highly respected here amongst our people. The four sacred colors that you see, these young ladies that are dancing here, bringing in the power and that good spirit and that good feeling. For Ojibwe people, spiritual power moves through air. And you can imagine how important the jingles are on a jingle dress. But when you have dozens and sometimes even hundreds of Ojibwe women dancing together. The sound is really very beautiful and it's very powerful and I think anyone who witnesses a grand entry can feel that energy. The healing power of the dress is that people watching it and just that sound is so calming and it's just like, for me, my oldest daughter, her name is Bella, she's in a wheelchair and she doesn't walk, so when I dance I always think about that you dance for the people that can't. The four little girls that came in behind us at the Hinkley Powell, we all formed bonds with them. The, the girl that wore the same colored dress as me, um, you know, she comes up to me now every time she sees me, and I feel really good about that, that they have somebody positive to look up to. I like watching the little girls. It just shows that um, we're doing our job as adults. Our number one job is to pass on our teachings to our children. and when those little girls were dancing, that just goes to show that we were doing our job. You know, we were taking care of our children, we were taking care of our future. When we have dreams and we're in regalia, we're supposed to remember the colors and then we're supposed to make it the way we dreamed because that's the dress you're supposed to be dancing in. We were told that you had to have some sort of a dream about a jingle dress uh, in order to be able to wear a jingle dress. As I, as I grew older, it was kind of taken on like as a duty or as a responsibility to become a jingle dress dancer because of where I'm from, because I'm from Lax. Around 12, 13 years old, that's, that's when um, jingle dress dancing became a priority. I dance contemporary, it's my favorite style. Contemporary is more of the now. It's, it's actually a newer dance. It makes me feel really good. I get to move a lot more. The contemporary dress is more flashy. It has a lot more colors, a lot more designs. They're beautiful. Traditional, what we're dancing, the four colors, we actually don't have. It's, we call it a fan. We don't have those because back then we didn't really have them. They started developing over time. I like to use a fan, personally. Um, I've been told that it helps block bad medicine while you're dancing, and then when the beats, when we hold it in the air, those are honor beats. So when we hold our feathers in the air, which are usually eagle feathers, we're honoring. I love dancing jiggle dress. I love the sound. I'm Native American. I'm proud. And that's what we do. We dance. People come from all around to see the men's fancy dancers. Women's Southern and Northern traditional. Men's traditional. Women's fancy. Chicken dancers in golden age categories. Women's contemporary jingle. And last but not least, the grass dancers. A powwow is a communal event. Old friends reconnect and new ones are made. There are handmade crafts, jewelry, and incredible food for all to be had at a powwow. Hey, 
we were given many great gifts as an Anishinaabe. One of them is the jingle dress. It has been a powerful source of healing to those women who wear it and to those who offer tobacco for its healing capabilities. We wear it with pride and we dance for our people. The jingle dress has changed over time, but what hasn't changed is the respect and love that we at Mille Lacs have for the jingle dress. The Jingle Dress Tradition is a co-production of the Mille Lacs Band of Ojibwe and Twin Cities PBS. This program was made possible by the voters of Minnesota through a grant from the Minnesota State Arts Board, thanks to a legislative appropriation from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund.